So in today's video, we are in the heart of Hampshire, right in the countryside, and I'm gonna be talking you through and showing you this outdoor kitchen that we've just completed. We did the whole patio, this little paved area, and everything that you can see here, including the pergola. So when we first arrived on this job, um, there was a patio down here before. It was a really old Indian um, sandstone patio. It looked quite worn and everything else. Um, over here, we had a pond, um, which I think is pretty much where the pergola is, was the size of the pond. I think there was a, some sort of a water feature or something like that there. Um, and we did have these planters that were here already. So the spec on this one was to get rid of the pond and everything else and create this um, outside living area with a pergola over the top um, that the, you know, the customers were gonna be able to use all year round. So like I say, the first thing we did was to pull up all of the existing um, patios. Um, underneath, we had a nice little surprise. There was about a 70 mil concrete slab underneath. So we had the digger in there with the pecker on it. We had to, to break up the whole thing and get rid of that. But that then left us with a solid base um, to work on. So we, we whacked all of the hardcore and everything like that that was down. And then the customer chose these um, sandstone, Indian sandstone, patio slabs which are really really nice there are mixed sizes so it's a very random pattern on there um, there were I can't remember what was here with the steps but we took those out and have replaced those now with um, just proper um, stone slabs um, and we've built it up we've used the the stone as well from the kitchen to build it up to give it that really nice look um, and then so coming around to here what we then decided, well, what the customer decided to do and asked us to do. So it's worth mentioning that the customer is an interior designer, so she has a really good eye for things that look really good and things that work. Um, she wanted to have this sort of herringbone style paving um, in the kitchen area to really separate the sort of the dining area from the kitchen area. And but also to have like a border that runs around, again, that outlines the kitchen. So you can see over here, we've used the same patio stones all the way around the outside there and then created this border with the herringbone pavers on the inside there and the, the effect is just brilliant the way that it separates the two zones it works really really well so the other thing that we've done and that the customer wanted us to do was um on here before i Oh, I, can't, I think there was some sort of coping stone or something like that, but she wanted to have the same coping stones to match the Indian standstone. So these were made especially, they were cut especially, um, and we put these on, um, on, on all three of the planters here. The corners have all been mitered. It looks really good. Everything is tied together and it flows really, really nicely. So they also wanted this pergola to be put over the kitchen area itself. Now this pergola, it doesn't have a cover or anything like that, so it's not gonna stop the weather or the rain coming in, um, but it does um, aesthetically give that enclosed look that makes the kitchen, gives it that, that image that it's its own room. Um, it also provides an opportunity to hang these festoon lights around there. We've also put some heaters up there and in there. That's gonna provide heat to everybody sat here around the table. And this one's here is gonna provide heat to anybody that sat inside the kitchen area. Um, we've got a socket up there, which the, um, which the heater is plugged into. We've got sockets behind there where the lights are plugged into. So all of the sockets are hidden away, um, but you can see now that this whole area is able to be lit up. And at night, I'm sure it looks absolutely incredible um I, just worth mentioning also i just love the fact with this all the planting the garden everywhere the whole thing is just completely enclosed with these bushes so it feels like a proper outdoor room like you're you're inside like almost like a natural room it, look, it looks incredible 
So let's talk you through the kitchen, how we built this and everything that this has got in it. So the first thing to note is this is um, built using a stone. Now this is a Purbeck stone. It's called Chicks Grove. Um, so these actually come from a quarry in the Purbeck Hills, which are in Dorset. They're not too far from, from where we're based. Um, they do lots and lots of different stones, different cuts. So they all come out of the quarry in just big chunks of stone. And we actually had these cut, especially to brick size. They're about 215 mil long, 65 mil um, high by 100 mil wide, uh, which is a standard brick size. And that just makes it very easy um, to lay these. Um, but they just have this beautiful sort of limey sort of finish. It works really well. We also use a, a lime uh, mortar. So we mix lime with the sand and the cement when, when they're laying the bricks and it gives it that white mortar look. So that's the um, that's how the construction of it. It's a it's, a, it's, a, it's an L shape kitchen. Um, you can see all the the cutouts and everything, um, and we've got a lower section for the Kamado over there behind where these um, these doors and, and pull out bins are. We just use metal catnick lintels. So they're a metal lintel. It's in an L shape like that. It goes in behind, and then the bricks just sit along there. So you can't actually see the lintel, but it supplies it supplies. Um, provides support above for all the bricks. So the barbecue, this is a Napoleon 700 series BIG 32. So there are three different sizes. I think there's a 32, a 42 and a 48, I think. This is the smallest one and you can see it's still ginormous. Um, this is probably eight, 900 mil, what's that, three foot wide. Um, it's absolutely huge. Everything is stainless steel. It's got a warming tray at the back, stainless steel grids there. It's got one, two, three, four burners. Um, and it's also got the back burner as well. So it's got lights on it as well. You can see we've got the button here. You can turn the lights on, you can turn the lights off. When you turn the burners on, for like for example, you just simply push this, turn it, um, that burner will turn red and that signifies that the burner is on. When you turn it off, they'll go back to the blue color. Um, it comes with a rotisserie as well and it's got a back burner there. So this is the burner for that. You push that, turn it and there's your ignition and it lights. So that is the 700 series barbecue uh, thermometer on there as well. Uh, underneath here, we've simply got um, double access doors. So you've got your gas tank in there. This is propane. It is available in natural gas as well. Um, also, if you want to come and have a look in here as well. Um, so we've brought something I didn't mention was we brought a brand new electrical feed from the house all the way underneath the patio into here. And you can see we've got a consumer unit under there. And from there, that runs all the power for the barbecue, the lights, the heaters and everything else. It's worth bearing in mind that heaters sometimes draw quite a lot of power. So, you know, if you're thinking to build an outdoor kitchen and you want heaters in there, it's worth bringing its own run out from the con consumer unit in the house. Um, and then you're going to be sure that you've got enough power to run it. Um, so that's that. So coming along to here, again, we've simply got two more access doors and that is just going to provide storage. Underneath there, you've got charcoal, all the bits and pieces, wood chips that you're going to need for the, the Kamado over there, the monolith that has lots of accessories and things. And because of the size of it, they're normally quite big. So having storage like that is really important. Here we've got the beef eater stainless steel single fridge, glass front there. Um, lots of space to keep your uh, drinks and food in. And then over here, you have a stainless steel pull out waste drawer. Um, so I just always say to the customers, go on Amazon, something like that, get the biggest bin you can find, put it in there. And that's just a really handy to have a bin outside to chuck all your waste in. Um, <clears throat> coming along to the end here, we have got the monolith uh, Kamado. This is the classic Pro Series 2.0. Amazing piece of kit. I'm a massive fan of these. I've got one at home. I cook on it all the time. If you like cooking, it's an absolute no-brainer. Um, I have done a review of this and an unboxing. If you want to see that, we'll leave a link up there. Go ahead and, and have a look at that. Um, and then last but not least is the worktop. So I can't remember the name of these worktops. Um, they're 30 mil thick, so they're nice and chunky. They're really, really nice. And they're like a light color with brown flecks and like different shades of dark color, cream and gray. Um, it works really well with this, um, with this stone. You know, when you're designing these kitchens, 
and you know you have to try and match the colors to different materials and things like that you know you're never quite sure how it's going to come out um, but this just looks absolutely incredible and another thing that i would say about this is it just doesn't show dirt and, and dust and things like that sometimes when you've got these like these really dark granites and black granites it can show the, the the dust on there and pollen and things like that but this just doesn't show it at all very easy to clean it's a polished finish um, really really nice so there you go what a gorgeous kitchen in a in a beautiful location and we've really enjoyed building this one and it's great to be able to use new materials as well um, you know a lot of the things we do are in brick and they're in in block work but building this out of stone um, it just adds something a little bit extra to the kitchen um, so i hope you've enjoyed watching this video if you want to see more like it make sure you subscribe to the channel we try and release one of these at least once a week um, we also have facebook and we have instagram uh, and we try and post on there a couple of times a week so head over there if you want to see what we're currently up to. So thanks very much for watching this video and we'll see you on the next one.